everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and this time we're looking at one that I think is special. Uh, it's special because this action figure is a figure of a woman, and this character came out in 1982, and she was portrayed as doing things that, at the time, women were not allowed to do. And that makes her a pioneer, and therefore, I think she's important and special. I'm talking about, you already know who I'm talking about. Let's look at the 1982 G.I. Joe counterintelligence specialist, codename Scarlet. If you are a fan of G.I. Joe, you already know who this is. This is Scarlet. She was first introduced in 1982 as part of the first wave of G.I. Joe figures when the line was relaunched that year, and she was released in this straight arm version. We will talk about the articulation in a few minutes. In 1983, the following year, she was re-released with swivel arm battle grip. Like all of the 1982 figures, she was re-released with a new point of articulation. Uh, she was sold in this swivel arm version through 1984 and was discontinued in 1985. In 1985, she was replaced by the new G.I. Joe covert operations specialist, Lady J. But Scarlet was never replaced in G.I. Joe media. She, she continued to appear in G.I. Joe media all the way through the end of the line. Scarlet was the first woman to appear in the 1980s G.I. Joe toy line, and as it has been revealed by former Marvel Comics editor, in chief Jim Shooter, Hasbro believed that women action figures don't sell. So it took some courage for Hasbro to put Scarlet out among the first series of G.I. Joe. Hasbro may have been thinking of their first attempt to make a female G.I. Joe action figure. That would be the 1967 Action Nurse. And that one did not sell well. That one was considered a failure. On the other hand, Princess Leia was part of the Star Wars toy line before the new G.I. Joe came out, so there was a precedence for women action figures. Let's take a look at Scarlet's accessory. She came with only one. This was the XK1 power crossbow. And what exactly it means by power crossbow, I'm not sure. Essentially, this is a pistol crossbow with a scope. This crossbow may not be a copy of a real world weapon, but crossbows do exist and have existed for a very long time. So this is not a fantasy weapon. Uh, there's some detail on there, but not a lot. Uh, so uh, it's a little bit short in the detail department, but it's still not a bad accessory. Crossbows fire arrow-like projectiles called bolts or quarrels, and quarrel was the code name for the UK Action Force version of Scarlet. The weapon has a single bolt sculpted onto it, and Scarlet does not have any replacement bolts. This is where a backpack would have been in order. A backpack with some extra bolts would have made more sense. This crossbow started a tradition of G.I. Joe not giving their women characters firearms. Uh, the 1984 Baroness came with a laser rifle. Still not exactly a firearm, but it was closer than this. But most G.I. Joe women characters got uh, some kind of maybe projectile weapon or something like that, but not a gun. In 1983, G.I. Joe started coming out with Battle Gear accessory packs, which were reissues of old accessories. This is the accessory pack version of Scarlet's crossbow. You can see it's using the exact same mold as the original, but it's in a lighter color gray. So do watch out for that. It's very easy to get these two mixed up. Uh, but the original is this very dark, almost black gray, and the accessory pack version is lighter gray. Now let's look at articulation. The 1982 Scarlet had the typical articulation for figures of that year, meaning she could turn her head from left to right, she could lift her arm up at the shoulder, and she could swivel her arm at the shoulder all the way around. She had a hinge at the elbow, meaning she could uh, move at the elbow about 90 degrees. So the figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. It allowed her to move at the torso a little bit. She could move her legs apart about so far, and she could move her legs at the hip about 90 degrees, and she could bend at the knee about 90 degrees. The 1983 version of Scarlet had the same articulation as 1982 version, except it added one new point of articulation at the bicep. Not only could she move at the elbow about 90 
90 degrees, but she had a swivel at the bicep, she could swivel her arm all the way around. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of Scarlet, starting with her head. And the first thing you notice about her head is her hair is very red, fiery red, fire engine red. It could not be redder. She also has short hair, unlike how she was depicted in different G.I. Joe media, where she had long hair, often tied back in a ponytail. Uh, the action figure just did not reflect that. Uh, these early uh, women action figures in G.I. Joe, uh, the hair, they just hadn't figured out how to make the hair long, so all the hair on them was short. The first woman G.I. Joe action figure to have long hair was the 1984 Baroness, who had a separate hair piece that was molded out of softer plastic to give it this long hair effect. Much has been said about these face sculpt for Scarlet, and yeah, it's really not that good. Uh, compared to the image on the file card, it really does not live up to that image. This does not look like the same person. Unfortunately, it was kind of par for the course on those early G.I. Joe uh, head sculpts. Um, the other figures that came out in 1982, uh, the faces on those figures left something to be desired. The sculpting on these figures did get better as the years went on. On her chest, we see she's wearing a light tan or almost flesh-colored leotard over sort of a pewter-colored bodysuit. This chest is a little bit short on detail, but it does have a grenade on this side. Uh, and on this side, there is a red pad, and this would be a shoulder pad probably for the butt of a rifle, like if she were a sniper shooting. She would rest the butt of a rifle on her shoulder. Unfortunately, she doesn't come with any weapon uh, that would utilize this shoulder pad. Also, although it's difficult to see, there is a zipper coming off of her neckline right there. She has really no detail on her back other than that red shoulder pad. The upper arms on the straight arm version are very plain and thin. Uh, the upper arms on the swivel arm version have more detail, and these upper arms were reused for other figures. The figures that share these upper arms include the 1984 Baroness, the 1983 His Tank Driver, and the 1983 Cover Girl. Her lower arms and hands, however, are unique, and they have some points of interest. On the inside of her right wrist, she has a very small silver pistol, which I guess counts as a firearm, but it's just sculpted on so she can't hold it. On her left wrist, she has two silver throwing stars. Her waist piece is pretty plain. She has a belt, and that's a small waist piece that is smaller than the waist piece that came on the male action figures at the time. And then on the back, we have one of the strangest details. Uh, sort of uh, hooked here on her back pocket is a slingshot. Of all things, I don't know why she would have a slingshot. That's a very weird detail. It is uh, painted there in silver. On her upper legs, she has the pewter grayish colored bodysuit, and on her right leg she has a pocket, and she has a mysterious electronic device uh, with silver paint. On her right leg she has a dagger, uh, that is painted silver. She has some very tall boots that have pockets on the inside and the outside. Uh, they match the color of her gloves and her leotard, and these boots have some heels. Scarlet is the only figure that could not use figure stands, and that's because her feet did not have holes for foot pegs. She is the only G.I. Joe figure that I'm aware of that did not have holes in her feet for foot pegs. Even the 1984 Deep which had a whopping two points of articulation, still had holes in the bottom of his feet for foot pegs. I have to assume the designers made this decision because she has small feet, and they probably figured her feet were too small to drill holes in them. However, the 1984 Baroness also had small feet, and she has holes in her feet for foot pegs. Let's take a look at Scarlet's file card. This file card was printed on the back of the card on which the action figure was packaged. You can see some of the artwork from the front of the card there. There. there are a bunch of different variations of Scarlet's file card floating around out there, including one version of the file card where the portrait actually has a picture of CoverGirl instead of Scarlet. I don't have any of those variations. This is just the most common version of Scarlet's file card. Her specialty is counterintelligence, and counterintelligence is sort of like an anti-spy. So her job is to prevent intelligence gathering by the enemy, by 
by catching enemy spies. Her codename is Scarlet. Her file name is Shanna M. O'Hara. Her primary military specialty is intelligence. Her secondary military specialty is classified for some reason. Her birthplace is Atlanta, Georgia, and her grade is E5. Scarlet's personal information here is a scrambled up reference to Gone with the Wind, the 1936 novel by Margaret Mitchell that was turned into the 1939 movie starring Vivian Lee. Vivian Lee's character was named Scarlet O'Hara, and the story was set in Georgia. This section says, Scarlett's father and three brothers were martial arts instructors. She began her training at age nine and was awarded her first black belt at age 15, graduated advanced infantry training and ranger school. And it's worth noting that this card was published in 1982. At that time, women were not allowed in ranger school. The first women to graduate ranger school happened this year in 2015. Special Ed Covert Ops School, Marine Sniper School, Special Air Service School, Marine Taekwondo Symposium. Now just that part of this paragraph makes Scarlet out to be a super lethal badass, but it does not stop there. Look at all the weapons that she is a qualified expert in. Follow along with me. Qualified Expert M14, M16, M1911A1, M79, M3A1, M700 Remington sniper rifle, MAC-10, XK-1 power crossbow, throwing stars, Garrett, and K-Bar. She is an expert in all these weapons, but instead of including Scarlet with some of these high-powered firearms, they included her with the pointy stick shooter. This bottom section has a quote. It says, Scarlet is confident and resilient. It's remarkable that a person so deadly can retain a sense of humor. Does she really have a sense of humor, or does everybody just laugh at her jokes because they're terrified of her. Looking at Scarlet overall, she is definitely more super heroine-like than soldier-like with these colors, but I really think uh, this costume is meant to look sort of like Emma Peel from the British television show The Avengers. Uh, Emma Peel kind of wore these uh, full-body costumes like this, and if this uniform were all black, that's exactly what this would look like. Scarlet was such a powerful character in G.I. Joe Media, she probably deserved a better action figure. We did not get a second version of Scarlet until way toward the end of the vintage line, and that second version of Scarlet was not a very good action figure. I still like this figure, though, despite the fact that in some ways it's kind of weird. What with the strange color choices uh, and the less than impressive head sculpt and the slingshot on her butt. Scarlet was very unique among that 1982 lineup. First of all, she was a woman among a bunch of men. Uh, also, the figure used entirely unique parts, whereas the other figures in that lineup, uh, they reused a lot of parts between them, whereas Scarlet was entirely unique. Also, since the other figures in the 1982 line wore green uniforms, Scarlet really stood out. As Scarlet was portrayed in the G.I. Joe comic book, her sex was a non-issue. She fully participated with all the other members of the team sometimes even in a leadership position. As she was portrayed in the G.I. Joe cartoon, she was a little bit more feminized, and she served as a love interest for Duke, the team leader. In 1980s properties that were marketed towards boys, women were treated probably better than you might expect. However, there was a common practice that women characters had to serve as romantic interests for one of the male characters, usually the team leader. And and in the 1983 G.I. Joe animated series, that was Duke. In the comic book, however, Scarlet was romantically linked to Snake Eyes, and I always thought this pairing made a lot more sense. I would think that Snake Eyes' mysterious nature would appeal to Scarlet a lot more than Duke's machismo. To be totally honest, though, Scarlet doesn't need anyone. She's smart, she's strong, she's independent, and she definitely does not need some man to 
to protect her. In one of the classic comic book issues, issue number 21, The Silent Issue, Scarlet is captured by Storm Shadow, Cobra's ninja, and Snake Eyes goes in to rescue her. But Scarlet doesn't just sit around waiting to be rescued, she escapes. She does ultimately fly out with Snake Eyes, but she's perfectly capable of taking care of herself. I am somewhat biased towards this figure though. Uh, objectively, this isn't necessarily a very good action figure, but it is the only Scarlet figure that we got in that vintage line that portrayed her in her classic uniform. This, this is the best Scarlet figure that we had. And because I love the character so much, I mean, this character was one of the best developed characters uh, in all of G.I. Joe, and she is integral to the G.I. Joe storyline, especially in the comic book. Uh, so even though there are some shortcomings in this figure, you still have to have it. The diversity in G.I. Joe influenced me as a child. I mean, the way Scarlet was portrayed in G.I. Joe, she was an integral part of the team, and so it really didn't make any sense to me, this idea that women couldn't do certain things. I mean, just look at Scarlet. She could do anything the men could do, and they really never thought anything of it. It, it wasn't something that was played up as uh, some kind of special thing that she was a woman doing uh, things that were traditionally done by men. No, she just did it, and that's sort of how I approached uh, women characters uh, in G.I. Joe and elsewhere. Uh, women uh, were as perfectly capable of doing everything that male characters could do. And Scarlet was portrayed this way at a time when the general public was vehemently opposed to the idea of women serving in combat roles. And now, finally, 30 years later, we are slowly starting to get over these arcane ideas about women. Uh, and we're no longer seeing women as objects that, at best, need to be protected by men. I often refer to G.I. Joe as a toy line that was marketed toward boys, which is true, but I do not call G.I. Joe a boy's toy line. There were plenty of girls that also played with G.I. Joe, and it's not fair to them to call G.I. Joe a boy's toy line. Uh, that's much too limiting. G.I. Joe was bigger than that. And frankly, I would rather my daughters follow Scarlet and Lady J as role models uh, than the characters depicted in toy lines that were in fact marketed directly towards girls like Barbie. I would like for my daughters to acquire the strength and the toughness and the intelligence of Scarlet. She's an excellent role model for girls and she appears in a toy line that was supposedly for boys. Of course we can't give Scarlet all the credit for this transformation but let's give her a little bit of credit. She was ahead of her time. That was my review of Scarlet. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did make sure you give it a thumbs up on YouTube and don't forget to subscribe. I've got a lot of great new G.I. Joe toy reviews coming up. You don't want to miss them. And don't forget to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. You get a lot of updates there. You don't get anywhere else. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. See you then. That was Scarlet's thermal arrow. No further. If you shoot, you'll hit your friend. Step into the clear, Destro, if you've got the guts. <laughs> I have no time for childish games. I intend to deliver a healthy supply of the meteorite to Cobra and Scarlet. Women can't serve in combat. Their menstruations will attract bears.